Yo, what's up? We got a new mini event going on. It's a Battle of Atlantic themed one. Though, guess the problem? Enlisted doesn't have any ships. <laughs> but still, you get some decals for planes, which are really nice looking. You get a British one with flying fish. Looks cool. I'm gonna put it on, I guess, on a P-47. I already have one of the coolest decals you can get. On the P-51D I can show you. It's these here. And I might put this one actually on the P-47. It says Spitfire, though obviously Spitfire needs to be put on a fighter. <laughs> but yeah, the P-47 has some ugly ones. Yeah, I don't like these. So putting these flying fish there will look cool, definitely. And for the Germans you get a pregnant seahorse. But also to know, male seahorses can, some of them at least, can get pregnant, which is funny. Though, only them, not humans. So, guess what? It's, yeah, it's a cool looking emblem. <laughs> it's definitely cool, though I like this one more. It has more color and uh, fish with wings is always cooler. So, yeah, but this is just secondary. You also get swords. Sadly, only one. It says sword, no fucking plural here. Very big fail from Dark Flow. Why don't you give us two swords? One German, one British. Uh, but for those collectors who like them, you can get the rare British sword. I don't know which one of these it is. I only have for Germans the swords. Well, for the Americans I have one. Okay, the German sword looks like this. It's yellow with a long hand protector. And this one, I, yeah, I guess this yellow one is the German one. And this is the British one. I would say the British one looks really cool. Yeah, it it's more for piercing, as you can see from the stability. And this one is more for slashing. Like a cavalry sword from the Prussian Hussars in the 19th century. Very nice. But also, don't know, swords are extremely beneficial for charging. Because they give you the highest charging. And also moving speed in general. Well, makes sense because you charge with swords as an officer. To motivate your foot soldiers, so yeah, amazing. And they also have, well, they also, they're always one shot. It's impossible to survive a hit from a sword, no matter how much vitality and similar things you have. Though their attack speed is slower than that of a knife, makes sense. And their reach is a bit less than that of a, of a bayoneted weapon. So yeah, if you, if you want to have maximum reach, just grab any weapon with a bayonet and you're gonna have more reach. I think this bayonet weapon gets a 2 meter reach and swords only 1 meter 80. So yeah. So this is for those who are new to the game especially important to know that swords are insanely good. Get every chance you get to get one of those. And how do you get these? Very simple. You got three stages. Every stage two days to fulfill or complete and starting today it already started. And you get four missions every day. Yes, this time it's four, not three as usual. Why is it so? Well, so you can get more stuff. <laughs> Very simple. And all of these missions you do, they are made parallel to the main big event. The everyone's favorite... Uh, somehow not censored by Dark Flow <laughs> group from the Soviet Union. Yeah, this main event uh, forces you to get... 20,000 experience every two days and well guess what what you want to do now is to more sufficiently grind them is just to look at the stars for example get 80 kills destroy four vehicles get 50 bolt action shots and complete five battles what I recommend to do is if you want to play the least amount just try to maximize for these for example the bottleneck here is obviously this 50 bolt actions because you won't be able to do this in high BR so just play low or mid BR and you will be easily able to do this. I, for example, use bolt actions on BR 1, 2, 3 for Germans. And this is what I would play in order to get this done. And, well, guess what? 80 kills in, fi in 5 battles is very easy. 4 vehicle destructions also easy if you use vehicles yourself. If not, just play low BI and use engineers or use... Any anti-tank gun or low BI, it's very easy to get this done. So this no problem. The next stage wants you 10 pistol kills. Well, yeah. <laughs> I recommend only play the, the, the best pistols in the game. 
meaning for example the about for every nation the last ones you get they are so cheap now i mean they used to cost 3000 like this is a bargain and they are by far the best ones these first ones are very weak for example you start with the random vault walter and the walter gives you a seven round magazine not great this mauser though gives you a 10 round magazine well much better because every single bullet counts with these small pistols, they shoot very fast and yeah, you, you really need to empty your mech oftentimes. But the best way to get these pistol missions done obviously is through through event pistols and premium pistols because these are just these ca these are coming with ridiculous stuff like 20 bullets and auto mode. So yeah, this is like a mini SMG. And obviously pistols are stronger on low BR than on high BR because a strong pistol is like a, almost like a mini as a mini semi-auto rifle. So this is quite useful to do. Also headshots, grenades and 5 yeah, headshots are also not hard to do, especially with a sniper rifle. Or if you're if you're building a machine gun nest, it's very easy to strafe horizontally into a group of enemies and get like five headshots instantly. This is a good way to do it. Or also if enemies are in a building and only the heads are sticking out of the window, also very easy to get headshots, so that's not too hard. What's also funny is you just, from a tank machine gun, just shoot into a group of enemies. Since it's perfectly flat shooting, you can also get easy headshots, no problem. And the last day is basically the easiest almost. You get 30 ready point to APC activations, easy. 10 artillery strike kills, also easy. Fun fact. Last time I needed to do this mission, it took me like 4 or 3 games, because every game lasted only like 8 minutes, and we were constantly pushing the enemies back, and I never managed to get one artillery strike in time, because, it, yeah, <laughs> sometimes you get extremely unlucky, but yeah, whatever. And 60 machine gun kills, this is preferably done on BR3 or higher BR, like mid on high, because the machine guns on low BR oftentimes aren't that good, but on high BR this is very easy, so yeah. And never forget to click on purchase because no, not not on on uh, get the like the blue t uh, button you get here once you complete it to actually get the prices. It's it used to be forgettable. Now it's basically not forgettable because once you complete a task, you get an activation here to click. So yeah, now it's basically impossible to forget it. But it used to be for easily forgettable, and yeah, then you just suffered. Now. What some people also did for the main event, they were basically, well, apparently buying tasks. And I don't know how to do that, actually. I really don't know. If I find out, I'm going to write you in the comments. And they already unlocked these two squads. So, yeah. Interesting, though. Yeah, I would just wait. Because, yeah, I know waiting sucks, but it's part of the fun to <laughs> unlock the stuff. The only thing I don't like is, is if one nation gets it much earlier than the other. These two should basically come on on consecutive days, especially since they're fighting against each other. Because what this difference of eight days leads to is that this nation will be hard overplayed once this squad drops, and then the other nations suffer because it leads to imbalanced matchmaking. Yeah, so this is just stupid, but of course Darkflow doesn't get it because they don't play the game themselves. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, that's a problem. Also, we still didn't get any confirmation that the German machine gun gets upgraded to 100 bullets. So, yeah, that's a big fail. That's a big fail from Darkflow. So, yeah. Uh, well, despite that, nothing much except for the fact that the graphics for many people are fucked now, apparently. The game started to look quite strange, as you can see in the footage. Though, yeah, we're waiting now for this to be fixed, because the, the game looks, the game literally looks like, like a boomer playing around with Instagram filters, who put too much on a greedy filter, because that's exactly what it looks like. like. The colors are dimmed and too much yellow, too yellow, and the contrast became too small. And if the contrast of a big image is too small, or too low, you start seeing, well, everything starts flowing into each other a little bit, but it's, it's it also looks still gritty at the same time. It looks not realistic, very simple. <laughs> so, yeah, the only thing I recommend listed to copy from Hell at Loose is just the color scheme, 
basically the more dark and highly realistic gloomy looking colors especially on wet wet autumn forest maps like the Hürtgen forest map looks extremely realistic extremely beautiful amazingly immersive and also all the uniforms actually work there because enlisted has way too bright colors this just doesn't make sense uniforms like these barely work because even like, these uniforms are also too bright you can't around of a uni run around with a uniform like that and expect to be hidden in a forest especially in shadow areas where your colors are flashing everyone <laughs> into your direction so yeah though i recently started putting dark gray helmets on my soldiers I notice it looks much better than these, well, these helmets. You don't, you can't even get color matching helmets to the uniform, so yeah. Dark helmets it is, looks much cooler. And yeah, also looks less like a comic. If you have actually some darker stuff on your soldiers, alright? That's it. Let me know how your experiences were so far after the update. Overall, I would say it's quite cool and it's gotten quite fun to play. Especially since we have events now and every time you play you actually win something instead of for as we had for one and a half months where you just snooped around and didn't get anything. So yeah. Also here's a nice screenshot. I'm gonna post it in the community section. I made a screenshot I think yesterday, right after the update, where I showed how the German player base disappeared. <laughs> I basically was playing almost alone in the beginning of the game and then almost everyone left the team and I had to actually play until the end but the enemies were good so it was actually fun because it was actually some well, challenging though sadly with one or two more players it would have been quite a more balanced game but now the German player base returned and I had one of the most balanced fights ever the game lasted forever because it seemed like whenever we were about to win the Soviets captured so yeah, amazing teams from both sides, very fun game. And I recommend to everyone to play Germany or Soviets now, because both nations seem to be very balanced and strong against each other, especially on high BR. And don't worry if you don't have too much perfectly maximized high BR stuff. Half of the teams are basically mid BR or mixed. And they are not that, that it's not like the teams are full of high BR players. So as long as the team is remotely mixed, it's balancing out perfectly fine and I recommend everyone if you get up tiered for example if you, let's say you have a BR3 army and you put in one one machine gun 42 and this puts you into high BR well this isn't the best way to do but if you do it especially if you do it for fun or if you get yourself from the battle pass some vehicles like a tiger that also puts you only costs one gold order also puts you into BR5 well, uh, then better be prepared to, to, first of all, check if you have the squad unlocked to actually play the squad because uh, Gold Order vehicles require specific squads and High BR vehicles require High BR squads. So this is the first issue. And the second, make sure that if you're playing with an underpowered army in High BR, if you don't have the strong vehicles, avoid tanks because tanks are extremely imbalanced. For example, mid BR tanks are highly imbalanced against high BR. For example, BR3 tank like Panzer 4J, which is the best German BR3 tank, and overall one of the best mid, mid BR tanks, is completely outclassed by the Soviet IS 1s. <laughs> yeah, like this one has a 75mm and 8050 front armor. Guess what? The Soviet. Oh my god. The Soviet standard high BR tank has a 85 millimeter and 120 100 millimeter front armor so it's it's and this is this isn't even the most extreme one because this is the most extreme matchup so yeah <laughs> and this is slow by the way so you can't penetrate it that easily so you better focus on infantry in for example this would be a three soviets if i play against high BR, i won't use these tanks i won't instead i will just play infantry Try to spam rallies to make sure my teammates can actually cap and be very efficient. And build anti-tank guns because they are still working against high BR tanks. And if I want to play vehicles, I will play planes. Because a 250kg bomb kills every tank in the game, doesn't matter which BR. 
and heavy machine guns shoot down also every tank in the game, every plane in the game. <laughs> so yeah, planes are scaling up favorably, quite well, nicely up into higher BRs, but tanks don't. So keep that in mind, and then you will have some nice games, even if you're a new player and if you get into high BRs. All right, that's it. Until soon. Goodbye.